Well, thanks for coming. So you heard the title, AI to Mystify. I'm Tim Regan Porter. I'm the head of the Colorado Press Association. And you might wonder why someone at that organization is talking about AI. Of course, it impacts journalism greatly. Uh, but I also come from a tech background. I uh, started in tech, actually, at IBM and a couple startups. And in the early days of the internet, was were help, was helping very large companies get online. So if you didn't recognize it, the subtitle is a reference to Dr. Strangelove. I'm, I'm more of a tech optimist than a tech pessimist, so I never didn't really have to stop worrying too much. But I'm always worried. Uh, so let's get the fears out of the way and get to some practical examples. Uh, so there are very real fears, and a lot of them have some justification. Uh, the lack of control we may have over AI. Um, even what we have now uh, with some of the large language uh, models, we don't really understand exactly what it's doing. This is not traditional programming of if then, right? Um, and emergent properties have come out of this thing where a chat GPT like language model is doing things that no one expected it to do, picking up things learning language when it was never programmed to learn a language, for example. And then there's the fear that eventually maybe we'll have uh, artificial general intelligence where you start questioning what is sentience and conscience and this thing is really intelligent and can really learn. And then eventually that leads to killer robots, uh, which, you know, the Defense Department is talking about AI and drones, so it's not as far-fetched as it might seem. And of course, we've been raised on those movies. Uh, then there's the very real fears that are present right now. And what are bad actors going to do? How is this going to supercharge misinformation and disinformation? If you thought that was a problem in 2016, <laughs> hang on. And it can supercharge fraud, uh, just, just as the internet and computers did. Think, you know, It's not new damage, but they can now supercharge it. And then there are systemic problems in a lot of these tools. There's bias hallucination or incorrect uh, answers it might give you, and the impact on jobs. And I think people like me who tend to be optimistic are a little dismissive in saying that technology's never not resulted in net gains. Uh, you can't always assume that. And even if there are net gains, there will be different seg sectors of the population that will be impacted differently. And we need to look at the equity impacts of that. However, you might have heard people say things like this is as fundamental as the internet, or as computers or electricity, or even fire. Yes, people have come that far back. Similar to all of these technologies, it has the potential to be destructive. A fire enabled us to cook and grow our brains. It also enables arson and lots of bad things. Uh, same with all of these, right? So the real opportunity here is for AI to improve the way we work and live. So the productivity gains that are here now are amazing, and that's only going to get better. The breakthroughs in science, technology, medicine that I think this thing will unleash, uh, is, I think it, it, it's worth the risk in some sense. I mean, obviously not if we're all going to be eliminated, but I think we can um, hopefully forestall that. Uh, and it's going to restructure how we work and live, hopefully in good ways. Uh, but that's also going to require some rethinking of our of the way we govern ourselves. I mean, if we were headed to a Wally-like existence where we don't have to actually put in a nine to five, we don't wanna be sitting in our lounge chairs and watching TV and getting fat, but we'd also have to have, you know, we we'll looking at basic income guarantees and things like that. So all of that's coming that we're gonna be debating. Um, and AI can actually be used to counter some of these bad actors and there are people actively working on this. Uh, and the reality is the genie's out of the bottle. I don't think any amount of pauses that some people have caused for, called for or legislation is going to put it back in. Uh, so we're going to have to learn how to take advantage of the opportunities and address the problems. Uh, another thing that might help you relax is no, you'll never know it all. Don't worry if you, my mom thought when I post tweeted about AI and my daughter on Facebook, she asked what this owl thing was. Uh, people are at all along the ranges and nobody knows it all. Uh, so just dip, dip your toes in or plunge in wherever you want to get started and uh, don't be left behind. In terms of jobs, there's, you know, there's a quote that I've heard in the creative agency community. I forget who said it. Uh, someone asked, will my job, will AI take my job away? 
And the answer this person said was AI won't take your job, but someone using AI will. Mm. So that's good. Um, so what is it? You've been using it for a long time, many, 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 many years. So I was at Stanford recently and one of the communication professors was talking about AI and said, you know, spell check was invented here at Stanford. That was considered AI way back when. Nobody that's an eye at using spell check. They don't feel the need to just, you know, put a disclaimer on their papers that they use spell check. Uh, image recognition, advertising's been AI based for a long time. Uh, it's just getting more and more powerful. It's really in our consciousness tonight right now because of generative AI, in particular chat GPT, which became the fastest growing technology when it was released. Uh, there are lots of Variations, image generation is becoming quite popular, video generation, coding, marketing optimizations, so there's all sorts of tools. Increasingly, it's going to grow invisible, that this will just be embedded in all of the things you use. Uh, Microsoft Clippy is going to be coming back with AI. Uh, it'll be embedded in Alexa in a much more powerful way, or Google Home, all the different tools in our smartphones. Uh, and so you may not even be aware you're using AI too many times. It's already having a big impact. It continue to have more. There are real uh, research breakthroughs in medicine and science. Wearables, those will get more powerful. We will get more feedback on our health. You're already starting to see chatbots emerge, so basic common questions. You can just go online and interact with someone uh, virtual and get real answers. There are even virtual therapists, uh, customer service. You're also seeing that. Of course, we've been using variations of bots and voice, you know, automated voice systems for a long time. These are getting very powerful. Recommendation engines. So all, you know, pretty much everything you can think of. One of the surprising things about AI is how good it is at creativity. So in terms of manufacturing and space, um, you know, it's taken and created designs that were really novel and it's gonna enable those kinds of breakthroughs. Hallucination is the term we often use for, for AI giving you wrong answers. Chat GPT is the ultimate bullshitter, and I mean that in the academic sense of bullshit, uh, which is a philosophical term now, meaning you don't care whether it's true or false. It's not a lie, it's not truth, it may be either, you don't care. Perfect example of this was Trump talking about his uh, meeting with Trudeau when he was in office. And he said, we we're talking about the deficit. And I said, no, you're wrong. And threw out some stuff. I had no idea if it was true. I don't, he didn't care. That's what ChatGPT is. It tries to get to the truth, but it's primarily trying to give you an answer. Now, people are working on that. I think that will get better. It's biased because we are biased. So it's trained on all of our language, all of our cor the corpus of what we've written and increasingly what we've videotaped or audio taped. Uh, and so our biases are going to creep into that, so we need to be very aware of that. And then if you're using a tool like ChatGPT, right now it stopped uh, its corpus of data that it ingested, I believe it was 2019, uh, 2021, 2021, uh, 2021, now new versions will roll up, you can feed it information, but just be aware it's going to be limited by what it's fed. Always be an editor and a fact checker. I don't think any of these are reasons to not do it, but you do need to go in with some skepticism. And it's going to take some time, but it's still so much faster than generating everything on your own. So if you haven't gotten started, I'd recommend start with ChatGPT and get the paid version. It's $20 a month and it uses uh, GPT-4 instead of 3.5, and it is so much better. Can I ask a question yeah. about that? Because I do, I have a paid version. Yeah. And um, I have just out of curiosity, put the same, you know, uh, prompts in both. I don't see a big difference. Can you tell me what, what, you, what your point of view, I'm, I, like you said, I'm yeah. paying for it. Yeah, I'll show, actually I'll bring up an example in a minute. Okay, so four tends to be, three rate five is good. That's and so depending on what you're asking it, you may get very similar equal okay. quality answers. 3.5 tends to be more robotic. Four, you can get it to sound more human, but again, it all depends on your input. I did everything, but yeah. thank you. Uh, when people get started, they tend to use it like Google. 
give me an idea of a dim sum restaurant in downtown Denver. It might give you some interesting, but that's really not what it is. Treat it like an assistant. Tell it what you want. Have a conversation. Go back and forth. Say, I don't like this. I think you're wrong there. Do it this way. Um, and it can become really powerful. Ask, ask it for advice. It, like I said, it's really good at creativity. Um, so it's pretty amazing. Some things to consider as you're giving it prompts. Give it a role. Say, you are my financial advisor. You're my CFO. You're my CMO. Whatever. Think about the tone, you can ask for it, and you can go back and forth. So if it comes up with a tone you don't like, make it more formal, make it more casual, be more persuasive, be more humorous. Format, you can tell it different formats. This is, I think this is particularly gonna get more and more powerful, and Google's definitely working on this too for their tools. Give it an objective or goal, tell it who your audience is. You can give it an in the style of or a structure. And this could range from, give me a, Give me a poem about X in the style of Langston Hughes or uh, in the style of Tupac. Uh, or it could be, give me an answer the way Steve Jobs or Apple might approach this. And then now tell me how, God forbid, Elon Musk might approach this uh, or you know something like that. Uh, images, Adobe has a standalone tool called Firefly, but most of their AI stuff is going to be built into Photoshop and Illustrator. It's really easy to use. It's not quite as powerful as some of the others, but it is easier to use. Dolly is very powerful and easy to use. They just announced Dolly 3, which will be integrated into ChatGPT for paid users. Uh, it's not out yet. You can get Dolly 3 through Bing on Microsoft, uh, which is where actually those images came from. Through Bing. So if you do Bing image Dolly, you'll find it. The journey is probably one of the better ones. It's a little funky to use. You have to use to sign up for Discord. You do have to pay $10 a month as the base. Uh, That's pretty powerful. Increasingly, these are going to be embedded and already are in all of these. So Adobe has it and is building more. Microsoft is spending a lot of time and effort embedding it in their tools. Canva has it in there as well. Uh, Notion is a very powerful tool if you haven't used it. Zoom has just integrated uh, some really good AI features so it can summarize meetings and that sort of thing. Uh, and then a lot of email clients are building in. Copy.ai is really, really good. Uh, I tend to use ChatGPT, but at some point I want to dig more into Copy AI, especially if it can integrate ChatGPT. So this is made for, for writers. So marketing, uh, traditional, you know, creative writing, I think, but it's really made for business writers. Fathom.ai is a transcription tool. I like it better than Otter, so if you've been using Otter, you might want to give Fathom a try. I use Fathom with Zoom. Yeah, and it's Zoom, Zoom, you can get it for free with Zoom. Yeah. So I've turned on Fathom and the new stuff Zoom has, has uh, integrated. I haven't compared the two yet. Uh, but it'll give you a video, Fathom will give you a video recording and a transcript, and you can and go back and forth and find things. Uh, I'm, I'm talking really fast because we have a couple of minutes. So I'll just talk through some examples and maybe I'll pull up. We have uh, uh, grants that our accountant wasn't, I didn't think was accounting for correctly. So I described in ChatGPT what I thought it needed and it gave me all the, the accounts to create, the steps to take, the credit debit, when various scenarios. Uh, it can. I used it to save hours off a slideshow we were creating uh, for an awards dinner where there were over 500 slides. And we had all the information in the spreadsheet. In an afternoon, Saturday afternoon, while watching TV, I had it create it for me. I know coding, but I could have done this without knowing any coding. I had to go back and forth with it. Get it to describe things like your podcast convention strategy and positioning. I've used this. It takes a long time to kind of go back and forth, but it was so powerful. And it would have take, took what may have been months of work and shortened it into weeks. Grant application, forgot a grant was due at 5 p.m. A couple hours later, I had it submitted. Um, and if I had time, I'd pull up the 3.5 and 4 website with AI generated video. Uh, I'll, I'll upload this. I'll probably remove some of this because it's sensitive. But if you click on this, you can see uh, how we created the website. So, next steps play and explore. Train and learn. There's lots of, of free resources. There's some business focused training with a friend of mine called BizHack who we've partnered with. Uh, 
and hire some fractional help. He does, he does a lot of, okay, you got it, you've wet your feet, now how are you actually gonna use it in your business? So they can help you with that. And then there's my contact information.